afternoon and welcome to another edition of Miss Walker's Story Times. For this read aloud, we are continuing our book, Explorer Academy, The Novella Secret. Um, we started this one at the beginning of the week. Um, and we have our main character, Cruz, who um, has been accepted into a special school called the Explorer Academy. Cruz is originally from Hawaii, and he is traveling to Washington, D.C., where this school is. And he got off the plane and met his aunt, Marcel, who he's known for a while, but she's one of the teachers there. She teaches um, anthropology. And he met his roommate, Emmett, who makes these really cool glasses. His glasses um, emote. Um, he calls them emoto glasses because they change color and shape based on his emotions. Emmett created that. He met another one of his classmates, Sailor, who is from New Zealand. Um, but he, um, before he left, he was attacked when he was surfing and, um, Emmett noticed in the airport that Cruz might have been being followed. There was a guy that got off the plane at the same time and seemed to follow him around the airport. So that's where we pick up with on chapter four. To discover, to innovate, to protect. Cruz forgot to exhale as his gaze swept over the school's motto, etched in the marble above etched in marble above the steel doors, a row of white marble, mar, marble columns and a steep pointed roof that seemed to tap the sky. He remembered to breathe again only when they reached the summit of the limestone steps. That's our room, Emmett said, pointing to the window at the top of the corner of the building. Fifth floor, last window on the left. Inside the academy was almost as imposing as the outside. Blinding white marble with tiny black veins running through it covered the walls and the floor of the vast lobby. A relief map of the world covered most of the wall, the entire wall. Fan-shaped black scones sent V-shapes and the light upward with ornate black iron lamps topped with trapezoids, black and white stained glass shades illuminated the simple lines of black leather chairs and sofas. Most of the seats in the spacious rooms were filled with middle and high school aged kids talking or bent over their phones and tablets. Plush white and black rugs led the tall black granite front desk so shiny. Cruz could see his reflection in it. Cruz motioned for Aunt Marcel to go ahead of him with Sailor. See you up there, said to Cruz, heading towards the elevator. Fifth floor, Mount Everest room. FYI, all the dorms are named after natural wonders of the world. Of course they are. This is Explorer Academy. While Cruz waited to check in, he studied the rug beneath him. It was an Egyptian woven. Oh, it was Egyptian. It was woven with Egyptian finger figures and hieroglyphs. Thanks to Aunt Marcel, kip, cryptograph puzzles, uh, Cruz was familiar with this ancient form of writing. He knew that many of the symbols stood for, like the looped cross was the sign for life and the sun, which represented the passage of time. Aunt Marcel turned from the desk. Sailor is all set in one of the girls' rooms. In the Great Barrier Reef, giggled Sailor. It doesn't... That just figure, I come 14,000 kilometers away from home only to end up down under again. They laughed. Sailor picked up her suitcase. Thanks for everything, Professor Coronado. See you in class. Sweet to meet you, Cruz. Sweet as what? Sweet as. It's a kawaii thing. It, I know it's a sentence fragment, but Cruz felt himself relax. Making new friends wasn't going to be as hard as he imagined. Sweet as to meet you too, he said. Do you need anything to get settled? His aunt asked as they watched Sailor roll her purple suitcase to the elevator. I got it, said Cruz. She let out the same satisfied sigh his dad did on Saturdays when he got the last item crossed off his to-do list. I'm going to head home and check in with your dad. He said you're injured your foot surfing, she glanced down. Are you okay? Yep, see? Cruz bounced one foot to the other. His ankle felt as it had never been hurt at all. Good 
Good. So call or text if you need anything. A slow smile warmed her face. You're going to love the Academy. How many kids your age can go, say they get to go on an archaeological dig for a lost civilization or help save an endangered species? It's an adventure of a lifetime. You know, I know. He was excited but nervous too. She squeezed his shoulder. See you tomorrow. Bye, Aunt Marcel. A boy a year or two older than Cruz with his leg slung over the arm of the leather chair nodded towards the pink suit leaving the lobby. Is that your aunt? Cruz pretended not to hear. Hey, talking to you, super dude. Cruz glanced down at his goofy foot super surf shop tee. Hesitant, he tapped his chest. Yeah, you, the boy said, wearing the red t-shirt that said, I'm kind of a big deal. Is Professor Coronado your aunt? Um, well, he inched towards the front desk, but the young woman who helped Sailor had stepped into the back office. Hey, guys, get this barked big deal. He's Dr. Coronado's nephew. The forehead spun. Who? Cruz felt his face glow. I, I, big deal let out a whistle. Renshaw, you and all the other newbies might as well kiss the North Star goodbye right now. Not me, shouted a gangly boy nearby. Sunburned noise, nose and cheeks. They were covered in brown freckles. His hair was cut short so you could see the small mole on the side of his skull. That award is mine. Duncan Marsh, M-A-R-S-H. Spell it right on the trophy, people. That got hoops of young explorers and, and snorts from older ones. Thank you for that bold yet premature comment, Mr. March. The desk clerk was back, her shoulders barely clearing the top of the granite desk. The petite woman had bright green eyes and a short cropped hair that reminded Cruz of sparrow's feathers. A large badge reading Tamarin was pinned to her red turtleneck by her collarbone. I need to I remind you, she said sternly, that the North Star Award is based on many factors, including performance, attitude, and potential. The administration, faculty, and staff have input in selecting the winner, and I can assure you that no one, not even this young explorer here, will get preferential treatment. A hush fell over the lab lobby. All eyes turned to Cruz, who wished he could disappear into the carpet and hide among the Egyptians. This was not how he wanted to start things at the academy. This kind of news was bound to spread faster than head lice at summer camp. Everyone be would believe he was there because his aunts had pulled strings. How could he blame them when part of him believed that too? Also, there's no trophy, said Tamron. The win win winner gets their name engraved on a big crystal pyramid in the library. Cruz felt a hand on his shoulder. Don't let him get to you, whispered a voice. Turning slightly, Cruz glanced up at the friendly eyes that were not even a mass of dark curls could hide. I've heard some of the crutes will try to mess with your head, said the boy, who was two inches taller than Cruz. Some of them can't handle the friendly competition. I can, said Cruz. Then we're going to get along great, the boy stuck out his hand. Zane Patrick. Cruz Coronado. Cruz clasped the ivory fingers they shook. Zane had a strong grip. Ruff, ruff. They looked down to see an eager black button eyes of a high, of a West Highland white terrier gazing up at them. Hiya, pup, said Cruz kneeling. That's Hubbard, said Tanya. Uh, Taryn, he's a dog, but he's spoiled by all the attention from the explorers, so think he thinks he owns the place. Cruz let the Westie give his hand a good sniff before scratching the dog between the ears. Ruff, ruff. Herbert's tail became a white, fluffy pendulum of joy. Next, please. Cr Taryn was calling Cruz. Standing, he stepped at the desk. I'm Taryn Scar Scarliff, your dorm advisor. If you have any questions, problems, concerns, complaint, needs, wants, you come to me. I'm around 24-7 except on Saturdays between noon and 7 p.m. That's my afternoon off. During the day, you can usually find me here at the front desk, and at night, you find me on the fifth floor in the Sahara Room, just off the elevator between the boys' and girls' hallways. That's where I live. From there, I hear, see, and know everything that goes on. Everything. Got it? Translation. Don't do anything stupid, Cruz thought. Got it, said Cruz. Oh, and please don't feed Hubbard. He has a bit of a weight problem but with all the explorers slipping him food. So now all meals and treats must come for me. Okay, hold out your left wrist, palm up. Cruz heart flutter. My I, my left, yes, your left arm, and remove your bracelet. Cruz slid off his elastic Aztec dragon bracelet made from red and green beads, a birthday gift from Aunt Marceau last year. His dad had one too. Then he held out his wrist. Tamron said 
what he knew she'd say. Such an unusual birthmark. She turned his arm to get a better look at the rose-colored twisted ladder on the inside of his wrist. It looks like a double helix. Very cool. Here's a picture of it. She hadn't expected him to say that. For most of his life, he'd been teased about the two-inch blemish. He learned to use wristbands, bracelets, watches, sleeves, and even duct tape to keep it hidden. Tamron snapped the gold band like emirates on him. Over the next 15 seconds, the band slowly tightened, conforming to his arm like skin. It was so light, he barely felt it. That, this is your OS band. It stands for Organic Synchronization. Although explorers just call it Open Sesame Band. It's your passkey. Hold it to a security cam and it will get you into any place explorers are allowed in the complex. It uses the electrical activity of your heart to identify you. It's a miniature electrocardiogram machine, precisely. It also monitors all vital signs, brain functions, immune system, growth patterns, physical activity, calorie count, and whether you brushed your teeth. Really? I'm just kidding about the last one. Cruz chuckled. However, do not lose it or you can kiss the North Scar Award goodbye. Carelessness is one of Dr. Hightower's pet peeves. Cruz gave her a solemn nod. I won't forget. Word to the wise, she cocked her eyebrow. Don't focus on the award. You'll try too hard. Desperation almost always leads to an error. Then what should I do? Work a lot. Play a little. Take the rest. Take care of itself, Tamron said, handing him a computer about the same size and thickness of a greeting card. It had a black neoprene protective covering. This is your digital notebook. Use it for all your assignments, training sessions, and field notes. It has a keyboard touch screen, but also a stylist embedded in the top right corner. The tablet contains your ori orientation video, class schedule, school rules, campus map. Review it and memorize it, please. The dining hall is behind me. Head down the hall and you'll see it on your left. Your classroom is inside the library, which is at the end of the corridor past the dining hall. The main entrance to the cave is in the basement. Use the stairs at the far end of the library. La Abbey. Cave, computer animated visual experience. It's where you'll do your training missions. Simulator, a sailor would say, sweet ass. Don't lose your personal computer, said Tamron. Like I said, big pet, pet peeve. Orientation is tomorrow at 7 a.m. in the library classroom with a full day of classes after that. So, while I know it may be tempted to enjoy your freedom, don't. Get rest. You'll need it. Nobody sleeps through class around here. Cruz was tired. He hadn't slept much on the plane. You're in the Mount Everest room, said Tamron. Take the elevator, elevator to the fifth, fifth floor. Thanks. I know the way. He flung his backpack over his shoulder. One word. She bent to the crop, her cropped head. Opportunity comes in many forms. It's not how you get it that matters, but what you do with it. Cruz knew what she was getting at, but if other explorers were convinced he was being favored, nothing he said or did was likely to change their minds. How could he possibly prove to him and himself that he belonged here? Giving Hubbard a good night scratch, Cruz reached for his suitcase. Oh, and Cruz, he straightened. Yes, welcome to the Academy. Okay, so there's his arm again with that double helix birthmark he's got. And then here is a picture of the Explorer Academy map. Chapter 5. Emmett. It took a, Emmett took a big bite of his Belgian waffles smothered with bananas and whipped cream. Hey, Cruz, what's wrong? Don't you like your breakfast? Cruz glanced down at his velvet blanket of blackberry syrup flowing over a jumble of fresh blackberries, raspberries, blueberries down the stack of golden pancakes. Next to the pancakes, steam rose from a fluffy mound of white cheddar cheese scrambled eggs. Two pieces of lightly crisp bacon were tucked neatly beside the egg. I like it fine, Cruz said, and turned the golden rib plate. I was just trying to decide whether to eat it or donate it to an art museum. Emmett laughed, and so did the other guys at their table, Zane, Ali Sullerman, and Renshaw McCreerick. Zane was from San Francisco, Ali lived in Cairo, Egypt, and Renshaw was from a small town in Scotland called Eckle Freckle something or another. Renshaw and Zane roomed across the hall from Emmett and Cruz on the Victoria, in the Victoria Falls room while Ali was next door in the Grand Canyon room with Dugan Marsh, who was from Santa Fe's New Mexico. 
I know everything about the Grand Canyon, Duke informed them last night when everyone was gathering in the fifth floor lounge for popcorn. It's 270 miles long and up to 18 miles wide and more than a mile deep. Cruz noticed that Dugan liked to spout facts and figures and other bits of trivia. Was he trying to impress or intimidate? Given what Cruz knew about him, it was probably a little of both. It hadn't taken Cruz long to settle into Everest with Emmett. Their corner room wasn't large, but it had everything they needed. A compact 3D printer, plenty of closet and drawer space, soft mattresses and pillows, and a private bathroom. The walls were painted blue sky on the longest wall hung a large picture of Mount Everest. Cruz started to take a closer look. Great photo. That's no photo, corrected Emmert. It's the real-time view of Mount Everest. The webcam is streaming live from one of its base camps. Cruz shook his head in amazement. This place was full of surprises. So there's the image on their wall. That's a live shot of the webcam. Renshaw was elbowing Cruz. The fair-haired, skinned boy from Scotland had been in the lobby last night when Cruz had checked in and heard the comment about from Big Deal. Renshaw tipped his ash brown head towards Cruz, practically untouched breakfast. Nervous? A little, confessed Cruz. He had tried to eat, but a few bites he could manage of his very berry pancakes were doing a very merry dance in his stomach. Watching Emmett shovel food into his mouth and Zane laugh at something Ali said, he wondered how they could all be so calm. They were all minutes away from starting training at the academy. Weren't they scared too? I know what you mean, Renshaw said, yawning. I barely slept last night. I could use a wee nip right now, huh? Nap. Don't worry, Cruz. We'll teach. We'll get, help get each other through. My brother says it's how it's done. Everybody helps everybody else. Teachers encourage that. Thanks. That did make him feel better. So your brother went here? Still does. Joven's a year ahead of us. He's the top explorer in his class. Won the North Star last year. Wow. Yeah, he's great, Renshaw said, squinting the way you do when you, the sun stings your eyes. You better eat up. You don't want your stomach growling through orientation, do you? No, snickered Cruz. Taking a swig of cr milk, Cruz looked at his daily schedule one more time. Not that he needed to. He'd memorized it. Cruz had six classes. Comfort, con conservation, anthropology with Aunt Marcel, fitness and survival training, biology, world geography, and journalism. His calendar also showed he had cave training. This was time in the simulator would be extensive, an extension of their classwork with professors taking turns assigning missions. He was also required to take an evening class twice a week on a subject that interests him, such as computer coding, art, or music. Cruz had looked at the list and hadn't decided yet which class to sign up for. Maybe photography or pottery, he thought. Emmett was taking composite materials design, which sounded cool, but Cruz didn't want to intrude. Alani had two brothers and two sisters, had told him it was very important to give your roommate breathing room. Come on, Cruz. We're grown, said Renshaw. Cruz was confused until he saw his Scottish friends scout out his scoot out of his chair. Renshaw meant they were going. Cruz was learning that just because the explorers spoke English didn't necessarily make it easy to communication. Tucking his tablet under his arm, Cruz cleared his place. Everything was recyclable, including their leftover food, which went in the composite bin. Turning out of the dining room, they headed down the marble corridor towards the library. Cruz Cruz must have looked worried because Renshaw bumped his shoulder with his own and said, my brother says orientation is easy. Bounding together in the library entrance, the boys were met by a weary man with a brick, red brick hair and neatly trimmed beard. Everybody's so excited today. Welcome young recruits. A big smile revealed gleaming white teeth and a deep voice boomed with friendliness. Rook, he said, holding out his hand for Cruz to shake. Everything you see around here is yours day or night. If there's anything my staff or I can do to assist you in your studies, please be sure to stop by the checkout desk. We are here to help you succeed. Tipping his head back, Cruz peered around the rotunda. He'd never seen so many books. Five levels of shelves encased the round library. Curved metal staircases led from one level to the next. The ceiling was painted entirely like the night sky, but for a small circular window at the top that led in the morning light. It's something, isn't it, said Dr. Rook, glancing up. The stars are painted in the same formation that they are every night in the society was founded in 1888. Whoa, Cruz did a slow circle to take it all in. What's that, Dr. Rook? Emmett pointed to a round door that broke up the line of shelves on the fifth floor tier. That, Mr. That's Mr. Rook, said 
the library. And that is Sarah, our special collections room where we keep rare and first edition books, one of a kind photographs, ancient documents, that sort of thing. Access is restricted those. To get inside, you must be accompanied by myself or my assistant, Dr. Holland. I'm happy to take you anytime, but right now you better get to orientation. To get to the classroom, head straight back through reference and world cu cultures, then veer right by N Nellie Blah. Mr. Rook moved past them to welcome more students. Greeting new recruits. Cruz looked at Emirate. Who's Billy Bly? An American explorer, answered a different voice. Cruz turned to a grinning sailor York over his shoulder. Have you ever heard of Ju Jewel Verne's novel, Around the World in 80 Days? She asked. Of course. Sailor's lips turned up. Nellie did it in 72 days for real. Cruz was impressed. They made their way back through the stacks, passing life-size bronze statues of ground-baking explorers such as Galileo, Sir Francis Drake, and Lewis and Clark. They took a slight right at Nellie, as Mr. Rook had instructed. Near the natural science section, they saw a six-foot foot crystal pyramid inscribed with the names of the North Star winners. Cruz wanted to stop and read the plaque at the base, but it was almost seven o'clock. Inside the classroom, they found 24 chairs, one for each student, arranged in a semicircle in two rows. The front wall of the, the front wall of the room was made up of nine thin computer screens. The middle screen read, Welcome to the Academy. Everybody found their seats. Crows took a second to last chair in the second row between Sailor and Emmett. When the red numbers on the digital corner of the clock changed from 6.59 to 7, everyone got quiet. Five minutes went by, then 10. Soon, a low murmur went through the room. Did they forget we were here, Zane wondered? Maybe our teacher had car trouble, said Emmert, or is sick, offered Renshaw on the other side. A knot in Cruz's stomach tightened. Something wasn't right. They had elite explorers invited from all four corners of the globe to the most prestigious school in the world. The academy didn't forget them, not on the first day. It was 16 minutes after SEG when Du Goodmar stood up from his seat in the middle of the first row. I'm going to tell Mr. Rook. Good idea, said the girl from the front row from Cruz with wavy shoulder length hair. I'll be right back, said Dugan, sprinting for the door. Wait, said Cruz. What are you going to do, call your Aunt Martha for help? Cruz felt his stomach catch fire. I meant, what if they meant for us to wait? Oops, sorry. For what, snapped Dugan. Cruz wasn't no, for sure, but he felt like they ought to take a minute and think these through. That's what he did when Aunt Marcel coded puzzles. Sometimes something made no sense at first would click into places you considered it a bit. It could be the opposite. Maybe they want us to do something. You mean some kind of test, said Allie? Cruz nodded. Let's, that's what I'm beginning to think. It's an, ex, it's the Explorer Academy, said Emmett. Let's look around for clues. Maybe there's something here that will tell us where our teacher is or what we're supposed to do. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, said Dugan. You guys can do whatever you want. I'm going to get the librarian, and he stalked out of the room. For a few minutes, everyone stayed put. Finally, Cruz stood up. It wouldn't hurt. He figured he'd hunt for a clue or two. He turned his chair over, didn't find anything out of the ordinary. Emmett followed his lead, then Sailor. Soon the whole class was on the feet, flipping chairs from where everyone fanned out, beginning to scour the room. He checked the back table, the window seal, nothing. Turning the window, he straightened. That's when he saw it. How could he have been so blind? Cruz snickered to himself. Something funny? Said the tall girl with arctic white hair. She was pretty and wore a long sleeve t-shirt, but her skin was pale even paler than hers. I was thinking, what if our clue had been right in front of us all along? Pastel blue eyes widened where? He pointed to the screen. Welcome to the Academy, she read the words aloud with the Nordic accent. Yeah, so someone said to me when I got here last night, maybe I was thinking sh she said it to everyone else too. Welcome to the Academy? S gas, she gasped. Ja, that's Tyrant. I could be wrong. Hey, everybody, this guy figured it out, shouted the girl, grabbing Cruz's hand. We've got to go to Tyrant. It's too late for second thoughts now. Jogging through the library, the girl turned to him. You're Cruz, aren't you? He nodded. My name is Byrus Jorgenden. I'm from Rynick, U, Hawaii. Talk about two different worlds. It's probably totally unoriginal to ask this, but do you surf? I love it. We run a surf shop in Quad. Weird, my parents are surfing in the, own our own surfing tour business. In Iceland? Yeah, I know. 
isn't the water in the North Atlantic too cold? Not as cold as everyone thinks. Right now, water temperatures are about the same as in Scotland. It's the best time of year to surf. Surfing in si Iceland sounded fun. Cold, but fun. The class scurried down the wide marble corridor. Cruz ho hoped his hunch about the clue was correct. If he was off base, he'd have some pretty mad classmates on his hand, including Dugan. He glanced behind him. Maybe he should let someone take over, marching towards the hall lobby with Emmert. On one side was Byrus. On the other, there was no way Cruz could pull up or let anyone slip past with the momentum the eager crowd was pushing towards him. He was stuck in the lead. Right or wrong, crossing his fingers, Cruz hoped for right. At the sight of a group of new students lining up in front of her desk, Tyron clicked her tongue. Finally, 37 minutes. Not a bad bad first time, explorers. 23 heads dropped. Not the worst either. Ready for your next clue? 23 hands popped back. It was all Cruz could do to keep from letting out a cheer. He'd been right. Listen carefully, said Tyron. I will only say it once. Herbert, who was napping in the round red and gray plaid bed at the corner of the desk, cocked his ear. Flipping Open the tablet cover. He tapped on the button to start recording. Emmett gave an approving nod. Tyron cleared her throat. Come visit me in Mexico where giant crystals grace. Track to frigid island where I roam from place to place. Look at me in France where the old art is on display and seek me in New Zealand. Let insight, insects light your way. Cruz stood dumbfounded. This puzzle wasn't going to be easy. Hey, some of the kids said when Tyron turned away. Didn't catch all that. Can you repeat it? Sorry, I can't. Good luck. His eyeglasses, aqua circles, Emmett motioned to Cruz, Sailor and Virus to gather round. Tyron mentioned Iceland and New Zealand, those famous people in those countries that fit the description she gave. Someone who roams from place to place, Byrus bit her lip. There are legends about trolls and elves in Iceland, but I don't think it's the same for France and New Zealand, she traded, trailed off. Sh Sailor was shaking her head. Cruz and his great uncle had visited Mexico City a few months ago, but it hadn't had anything to do with crystals. Looking around, it was obvious the rest of the class was struggling to solve the riddle, too. Maybe if we heard it again, Cruz said to his friends, who agreed. Huddling closer, they listened to the recording. Tyron, Sailor clapped around around Cruz's arms. Insects light up. She wouldn't be talking about it. No, probably on the wrong track. Say it, even if it sounds silly. Once my family went hiking in a place in the North Island called Watamo, said Sailor. We took our boat tour down the river and these caves, and the place was lit up by thousands of glowworms. Emmett and Cruz caught each other's eyes. They knew the answer. The Cave of Crystals in Mexico. The Lassar Cave has hundreds of Stone Age paintings of animals. The sky left ice caves in Iceland were part of the glacier, so they're always moving. It's the cave, Sailor said with a gasp. We're supposed to go. They spread the word among the classmates. Everyone bolted for the stairs at the opposite end of the lobby. What about Dugan, said Zane. What about him, Renshaw shot over his shoulder. He left us, remember? This ought to take some wind out of his sails. Maybe, thought Cruz, but he didn't feel right to leave Dugan behind. Besides it, Hadn't it been Renshaw, the one to tell him everyone here helped everyone else? Cruz pulled up. You guys go ahead. Dugan probably went back to the library classroom. I'll go get him and we'll catch up. Cruz, if you're late, we won't be. It'll only take a few minutes. I'll only be a few minutes behind you. Cruz was already rushing across the lobby. He skidded around the corner to the hallway, shot his arm out, fingers locked on the front of his shirt, and spun him around so fast he nearly went elbowing. Cruz's spine hit cold stone and he felt the air whoosh from his lung. You should slow down, said a scratchy male voice. Somebody could get hurt. The air knocked out of him. Cruz could only let out a mouse squeak. Don't worry, Cruz. I'm not going to hurt you, but I'm trying to warn you. A million questions barbarded his brain. Who was this guy? How did he know him? Warn him? About what? The man relaxed his grip. Cruz caught, saw that his wrist was blotchy and red with skin resembling a wrinkled sheet. Glancing up into the shadows, Cruz saw more dark curly crinkly scars on the man's snake you need to leave the academy hissed the man leave i just got here i'm one of the new explorers yeah i know and i'm sorry about that but it can't be helped you can't stay it's only a matter of time before they get you the image of the scuba diver flashed in his brain cruz shivered do me do yourself a favor and get on the next flight back to hawaii he said and don't make the same mistake your mother did my mother? How do you know my mother? We used to work together. Petra would be alive today if she'd listened to me. I'll tell you what I told her. You cannot win. They are too powerful. Who? 
Nubella, he snapped. Don't you see? Of course you don't. Nubella can't take a risk that you. They heard footsteps. Cruz, listen to me. They killed your mother and they will not hesitate to kill you too. And that is where we will stop and we will pick up with chapter six on Monday. All right, guys.